Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. As you guys can see, I'm on a roll right now. We're going to talk about what you should never, ever do when you have a printer such as these right here. These are not your common run-of-the-mill, you know, four-color desktop model that you can run whatever the heck you want to run. These printers require that you run them often. And by often, I mean not every month, once a month, not every two weeks, but at least weekly, maybe even more. I just recently printed this, and it had been probably about three days since I ran a print in here before, and it did it in a matter of one minute from the point that my Q image ultimate went ding. I knew the file had been sent. It did a quick agitation process. It did a quick, very quick, surprisingly, surprisingly quick cleaning cycle, maybe 10, 15 seconds, and immediately began to feed the paper. Again, you have to print often. If you complain about these printers wasting so much ink, they're wasting the ink because they want to make sure the printhead is primed and it's cleared. Why? Because you may have not used it for a couple of weeks. And you're going to pay for that. I have paid for that. Believe me. <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking from my own mistakes that I have made. I have begun to realize that if I just use this often, like every day or every couple of days, it will not waste a lot of ink. Most of the ink that you use from your cartridges will be used to what? to create prints and that is the goal of a high level photo printer such as this one all right so here's what happens when a lot of times you haven't printed for a while and you get this odd result when a month ago everything was fine and now it's not do not continue printing continuing to print is not going to solve the problem that you are visualizing it could be a color cast that was caused by a channel no longer supplying that color ink. So everything then becomes the opposite. We are working with yellow, cyan, magenta, and black. That's it. And different levels of density of those four colors. That's how you get your 16 plus million shades of color from just four basic colors. So when you see, for instance, that something is printing it should have been neutral and now it looks greenish. Well, think about it. What would you subtract to bring something that was neutral to the green side? Think about it. Yellow and cyan make green, create green. So maybe your magenta channel is not supplying enough magenta. What if it was red? Red is made from yellow and magenta. So maybe your cyan channel is not supplying enough ink. So please, do not continue printing because thermal printhead printers require ink to keep themselves cool as they are printing. The printing process, not on Epson printers, but on Canon and other thermal printhead printers, utilize heat. They generate a droplet of ink at a specific temperature, almost boiling. That ink, of course, expands, and what does it do? It, it doesn't fit in that little orifice anymore, and it gets squirted out. That's how these printheads operate. That's a very layman's uh, explanation, by the way. There's a lot more to that. So there are resistors that are generating this heat. And so if you don't have ink constantly flowing through these nozzles, as they are generating these droplets, uh, that's what's keeping it at a certain level of coolness, I guess you could say. It keeps it from becoming damaged. The minute you start kind of reaching a little danger point on that temperature range, then damage can begin to occur. What could, what could happen drastically? A nozzle, and just use one nozzle out of the thousands, one nozzle starts to overheat. Well, guess what this is made out of? It's made out of pigment 
and a glycol type mixture. What happens if you take even a droplet of oil and you just cook the heck out of it? It will become gummier and uh, you don't want anything gummy inside that printhead, believe me. So you will literally begin to cook, especially the particles of pigment will begin to cook, it will begin to block that nozzle, which is already tiny to begin with, and it will then be permanently, and I mean permanently blocked, because you literally will cook that buildup that begins to occur when you begin to overheat. Okay, so not to scare you, but to tell you the facts. When you see a sudden change of colors. Had I printed this, and I have done this before, I know what it looks like, and now it does not. Stop. Go do a nozzle check, and the nozzle check will tell you what channel is deficient at delivering ink. That channel's nozzles, and by the way, don't call a channel a nozzle. Okay, a channel is composed of a several hundred nozzles. Okay, so get that straight. That often confuses people who are trying to help you with questions. So don't re if you tell me a nozzle, then I think it's only one of the nozzles in one channel. So okay, so remember that. I'm not. I don't want to be a smart ass here, but I'm just telling you how to how to express yourself so that people that are willing to help you understand what the problem may be. So remember, you see off-color, nozzle check. The nozzle check tells you if a channel is lacking. Let's run a nozzle check right now. Let's see what we have. We have maintenance and nozzle check pattern. And we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And it's going to go ahead and print one while we are talking. So when you look at the nozzle check, you want to see every channel represented on that nozzle check. In the case of a Pro 1000, you'll have little crosses like that. So you're looking for missing crosses. So if you have a color that is not being delivered due to whatever the reason, and this is later on, you're going to do your diagnostics and you're going to then try to solve that problem. Maybe it's your ink delivery from the cartridge. Maybe it's the actual channel. Indeed, it's, it's a little bit clogged. Maybe you have air in the printhead. In the case of a printer like this, it may be air in the lines, it may be air internally in the dampers, who knows? Cleaning cycle, cleaning cycle. Do not print, do not try to clear that problem by printing a cyan document. No, you're going to burn out the cyan channel. You're going to burn out the nozzles that are not firing correctly. Here we go. As you saw, it did not run a cleaning cycle. It began to print perfectly, and here we are. Let me show you what this looks like. It's hard to see, but every single cross is represented. And if you look here, right here, this one here, that's Chroma Optimizer. What it does, because Chroma Optimizer is clear and basically invisible on paper, it applies a little bit of gray and then two bands of Chroma Optimizer over the top. And you can see those are those vertical, little darker areas. That's a Chroma Optimizer. So that tells me that that printer is working correctly. All of the channels are clear, 100%. And I should be getting results like these, okay? And not something with a color cast or banding or, or missing areas. If you have a chronic set of a bunch of different nozzles that are clogged, you're going to get banding. Those nozzles are not printing, so you're going to get blank lines, basically across the images. So again, do not try to clear that by printing a corresponding matching color full document. It's going to burn out those nozzles. Those nozzles are struggling as they are right now. Do not put them through the torture of attempting to be cleared by printing because printing generates heat. Only run a cleaning cycle. A cleaning cycle is just application of vacuum selectively. Now let me tell you a little bit of a secret. If you look at this, you will see that you have three different vertical columns. 
column number one, let's call them zones or groups. Column number one is composed of photo gray, cyan, red, and photo magenta. The central one, group two, is photo black, matte black, chrome optimizer, and gray. Group three, blue, yellow, magenta, and photo cyan. In your driver, in your driver maintenance tab, when you go to your nozzle, check. It's not available on the screen. When you go to your cleaning cycle tab, you have basically four options that are basic, your basic cleaning, not deep cleaning or any, any of the sort. You can either do a global cleaning cycle that will apply vacuum to all 12 channels. Very wasteful if only your yellow channel needs to be cleared. Okay, so don't run a global cleaning cycle. Select either group one, two, or three, or zone one, two, and three, and then if that's where that color that requires a little bit of help is located, that's the one you should isolate. That way the other eight channels will not lose ink unnecessarily. They don't need to lose ink. They are cleared. Why would you want to do that anyway? So be very careful with that and always choose the single group that contains the color that requires a little bit of help. Now if there are two colors, one in a different zone, you will have to run cleaning cycles on each one. Okay? But remember, the other two will not be affected at all. If you have problems on all three groups, then yeah, you got to run a global cleaning cycle. Okay? And they come in different strengths. Your light one, and then your heavy, and then the deep one. The deep one is basically, it's going to waste a lot of ink. If I run one of those right now, I will probably very likely reach a point where that, that uh, channel, the photo cyan, will be zapped. And I will have to disable the chip here. And if you guys go back and check the video where I actually did that, it was kind of funny. I was doing just a general print, did a nozzle check, and during the nozzle check, because I had not printed for a fairly long time, it ran a rather extensive cleaning cycle. My fault. And I keep telling you guys, print, print, print. Put ink on paper. Don't put ink in the maintenance cartridges. Don't do that. That, that creates nothing but waste. Okay? And you're losing money doing that. Put ink on paper. Okay? Even if it's a nozzle check. At least you're creating something. And it tells you what, whether your printer has any kind of problems being developing at, you know, behind your back or not. So do that. Halfway through the cleaning cycle, the channel got zapped. Okay? The chip, that is. And I had to then disable the chip. It scared me a little bit because it just said, printing error. Oh boy, now what? And it said, restart the printer. I said, oh gosh, when you restart the printer, it's going to do a big cleaning cycle. I know that. Well, I restarted the printer. No, it didn't. It had already been cleaning, so it didn't need to do a cleaning cycle. It just immediately showed me that that channel needed to be disabled. That's all. Press the pause button for five seconds. That's it. It said processing, and it disabled that last, next to last channel. And I'm just waiting for that last one to finally give up the ghost and, and go disable. All right, so that's it for now. Don't print don't, don't, don't print documents to try to clear a specific color clog or a color defect, let's just say, that you might be seeing on your nozzle check. You get off color, stop printing, nozzle check. Look at the nozzle check results, determine what channel is being affected, causing that problem that you are seeing, and clean only that zone. Now, those instructions are for the Pro 1000. They are different for other printers because other printers may not have the ability to zone or selectively do cleaning cycles on specific zones of your print head. Uh, the Pro 1000 has that. The Pro 10 has that. The Pro 1 has that. 
Pro Canon printers generally have that option for you, not Epson printers. All right, that's enough. I didn't mean to scare you so much, but again, just just think ahead. Anytime you see a problem, and you know it's probably your fault because you did not print for a while, just follow those steps. Nozzle check, examine it, determine what the problem is. Cleaning cycle, do not print. Do not print a document of nothing but magenta. It will harm that magenta channel, okay? Keep that in mind. Patience, cleaning cycles followed by nozzle checks, and then let the printer sit unused for at least a day, come back, run another nozzle check, compare it to the prior one, the previous one, and then proceed, whether you have to run a secondary cleaning cycle or not, at least you know what to do next. Okay, you don't wanna ever get to the point where you're gonna burn out that channel because you were trying to clean it. And now you need a new print head, which costs a ton of money, okay, unnecessarily. All right, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. As always, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.